Hi everyone, Alvin Blocks here. Welcome to episode 20 in my scripting series. Today we will be looking at four loops. Now, this is a different type of loop to the in pairs loop, which we looked at before, but still very crucial and you need to know it. So what does a for loop do? Well, a for loop allows us to run code for a set number of times. So if we want to run the same code 10 times over, we want to just run it 10 times at once, we can use a for loop. Now, compared to the other loops that we've looked at, so a while loop, for example, that will run forever, um, well, indefinitely, until a condition is met. Whereas this loop is brilliant if you know that you need to run code for a set number of times. And trust me, you will use it a lot. So, I like to explain this using the say formula, S-E-I, so like sensei, um, say, S-E-I, and that stands for start, end, and increase. So these three numbers here, they are our say numbers, because this one is called the start value, this one's called the end value, and this one is called the increase value. So what is the point in these three numbers? Well, we have a variable which we have created here when we have written out our for loop and this uh, variable which is highlighted in blue this i it stands for index it's the index value and the reason that it will be important is well i'll show you actually so if i just actually i won't do that what i will do is i will tell you that this i variable here it's it is a variable so um, just without all the local stuff because it's a part of this for loop it holds a number so what we can do is we can tell the script that uh, if, if we want this hello to to print out five times what will happen is we need to firstly tell the script where I will start at so I is going to start off at um, zero uh, in fact we'll start it off at one we then want it to end at five so and then the i over here the increase value uh, so we've got our start so i is going to start off at a value of one and every time that this for loop goes round it's going to increase by a number and when it gets to five it's going to end the for loop and the number that increases by each time is this one here the increase value so this one so every time the for loop goes round, it finishes off the code inside of here, it's going to get to the end, and then if i isn't equal to 5, it's going to go round again. It's going to keep going round, it's going to keep increasing i by 1, because that's our increase value, it's going to keep on increasing it by 1 until i is 5. And when i is 5, it will break out of the for loop. So if we have some code down here, we print out finish. Okay, that will only print out when this for loop has completed because we start off here we then run the code which is inside of the for loop when that's finished well we'll obviously get to the the end but we'll realize that we that i is hasn't uh, it hasn't reached its end value yet so we will just go straight back to the top i will then increase so it will be uh, i plus 1 because i is our increase value and then it will keep on doing that until i is 5. Now, this can sound quite confusing, but we will do a couple of examples to show you. So let's print out hello, and we'll also print out the i value, and this should make it clearer for you. So what should happen is it should print out to begin with hello1, because our i variable, its starting value is going to be 1. So when we begin, i is going to be equal to 1. Then, when we've run this, this print line, we will get to the end and we'll head back to the start. And then because i hasn't already become 5 yet, we're still at 1 because that's our starting value, we increase it by 1 because we're on the second time now, so i is now 2. So you can also think of i as being the number of times that the code has run. So... Now that we're on our second time over, it will print out hello 2. Then it should get to the end, go back to the start, increase by 1 because that's our increase value. So it's now 3. It will print the code, 
go back to the start, it will increase by 1, so it's now 4. It will print out hello 4, get to the end, go back to the start, increase by 1, and now it is 5. Now on the fifth time round, because 5 is our end value, it will still print out, because we have we said we want you to do it until it gets to 5. And when it is 5, it will do it once more, and then it will stop. And then we go around again, but then we realise that if we add 1 to i, it will become 6, and we don't need to do that, because we're already at 5. So let's just print out and see what happens. So there you go. What we've done is we've printed out hello, and also the i value. So every time we've finished this print line, i has increased by 1, and we've looped around again. So the value of i has increased based on these three numbers. So it's printed out hello 1, hello 2, hello 3, hello 4, hello 5. And if you wanted to see it a little bit slower, you could add a weight in here. So let's just add a weight 1 to see what happens. Run again. So it's done 1, it's gone around again, it's 2. It's just going to keep on looping around. The only difference is that we delayed it by 1 second before it moved on. So... When it does reach the end of this code, which is in, in between the two lines, it will then add 1 on to the current value well, of i. But if you changed this increase value to something different, like 2, well, it's no longer going to increase by 1 every time. It's going to increase by 2 every time. So let's see what happens this time, because it's, surely it shouldn't go hello 1, hello 2, hello 3, hello 4, hello 5. You can't do that because it's not going up by 1 anymore. So it's, it's just gone hello 1, hello 3, hello 5, finish. Because the starting value was 1, so it printed out hello 1. We then waited 1, then we looped back around. And because the starting value of i was 1 and the increase value is 2, we then add 2 to its current value, and the current value is 1, so 1 add 2 is 3, hence why it's printed out hello 3, then it's waited 1 second, it's gone around again, and because i is now 3, uh, because that's what its value, it was increased by 2 last time, we then increase it by 2 again, we print out hello 5, and now we're actually at our end value, because we've got to 5. So it's not going to carry on, it's going to print finish. Now do you notice last time we had five hello prints, we know we now only have three hello prints because, because we increased by two each time instead of increasing by one, we, we didn't have to go around five times, we only had to go around three times because we still, the i value still, it got to five and then it ended because we've told the script we want it to end the for loop, hence the end value. We want to end the for loop when it gets to 5. When i gets to 5, we end the for loop. So you could set this to 5 uh, if you wanted to. And if we run it, it's going to say hello 1 and finish. Because if we were to add 5 on to i, it would become 6. And 6 is over 5. So we don't need to go around again because we're, we're already greater than our end value. But if we changed it to, uh, let's try 4. Let's see what happens when we change it to 4. It says hello 1, hello 5, finish. Because we started off with an i value of 1, we did our code inside of here, then we went back to the start, and when we go back to the start, i increases by the increase value. And because it's 4, we'll do i, which is currently 1. 1 add 4 is 5. And because it is equal to our end value, it will print out hello, get to the end, and finish. So it it will uh, only run twice. Now, you may be wondering, well, this is a bit pointless. Give me a good example of where this can be used. And sure enough, I can do that. So remember in, well, you, you may know in some games, there is an intermission where it counts down from a certain number or it counts up to a certain number. So after 30 seconds, the game will start. So if you wanted to do this yourself without any knowledge of for loops, you'd have to go intermission 30, and you'd have to do a wait one, and another one, and change it to 29, and do another one, and change it to 28, so that it looks like you're counting down. 
Now that's going to take up loads of lines of code, and if you wanted to change maybe the intermission to something else like game starts soon, you'd have to change all the lines, and that would take up too much of your time. So what if I told you you could use a for loop for this? Well, it's very, very simple, because if we just increase i by 1 each time, and we want to go from 1 to 30, in fact, we'll start at 30, and we'll go down to 1. So we've reversed it. So we're starting at 30. We want to end it when we get down to 1. But we also want to decrease. We don't want to increase. So because this is an increase value and it increases the i by 1 every time, we don't want this. We want it to decrease. So when we're counting down, we do a minus 1 because it is going to still add it. So it, let's imagine that i is 30. It's going to do 30 add minus 1. And if you've done maths yet, uh, you will know that a plus and a minus, so a positive and a negative, will make a negative. So it's actually 30 minus 1. So that becomes 29. So you can see how it's counting down. So now, let's change this to say intermission. And it's very important that we have the wait 1 in here, by the way, guys. Else it's just going to blaze through it and we won't be able to see it count down every second because it will just do it instantly. Let's run this and see what happens. So there we go. Intermission 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. You can see it is counting down from 30 all the way down to 1, decreasing by 1 each time. And we've also got a wait 1 second in there so that it is, it is an actual 1 second countdown. If we didn't have that wait 1, it would just run instantly and it would print out all of these intermission lines straight away. We wouldn't have this delay. So you can see the wait 1 is delaying it before it, it takes 1 away from each intermission. And there we go. When it gets down to 1, it will just break out of the for loop because it's finished. And if there was any more code down here that printed out finish, it would run. So you can also change, we can change the weight and we can see it happen um, 10 times faster or however many times faster. There we go. And you can see when it got to intermission 1, it broke out of the for loop and it just carried on with the rest of the code. So this, this is great if you had some code down here which is going to run your, your main game script because that will just happen as soon as the for loop is finished. So we have our start value, which is what the i value will, will start at, what its starting value is. The end value is what we want i to be in order to stop the for loop. And then the minus or the, well, the plus or minus increase value, increase or decrease value is what it will increase or decrease by every pass. When I say every pass, I mean every time it gets to the bottom of the code in the for loop. So once it's executed this print line and executed this wait line, it's got to the end and it's gone back to the start. That's what we call a pass. So in this case, there will be 30 passes before it finishes. Okay, so there we go. That is what a for loop is. Very, very useful indeed. So let's just do a quick recap. So this for loop will run our code a specific amount of times. So we can, we have control over how many times it runs. We can tell the script what we want i to start at, what we want i to finish at, and what we want to increase that i value by each time. So the code will keep on running until that i becomes a certain value. And this is very powerful. We can use it to count up, count down, or to perform code a certain number of times. It doesn't have to be an intermission. It doesn't have to be a countdown. You don't have to print out the i every single time. If I wanted to create a part like this, and I said my part parent equals workspace and my part dot position equals vector 3 dot new 10 10 10 this is just putting it in the air what would happen is if I put a weight in here so we can actually see it happening it would create that part uh, 30 times even though that we're decreasing doesn't matter it's still gonna run 30 times because it's counting down from the 30 to 1. So it's going to run 30 times. If I was counting up from 1 to 30, it's still going to run 30 times. So 
doesn't matter if you're doing an increase or a decrease on practical things like this. If you were doing an intermission, of course it would, because you'd be counting up when you might want to be counting down or something. But um, yeah, there you go. You can see it, it, it um, inserted 30 parts. And we'll run it again. There we go. It creates a nice tower, then it collapses. And it says finish when it gets to the end. So what it's doing is, let's just um, imagine that the starting value is, is 1 and then it ends at 30 and we increase by 1 just to make it a little bit clearer for you. So I is going to be 1 to start with. It's going to insert a part. Then it's going to add 1 on. So I is now 2. Gonna insert a part. Going to keep doing this. Going to keep on adding 1 to I. Then let's imagine we're at 29. And it makes the part. Goes around again. I is now 30. So it will make the part. And when it gets to the end, because we're at 30 now, I is now 30, we just get to the end and we finish. And I'll prove it to you, so I'll print out I as well. So let's look at the output as it generates these parts, so we can see how many parts it has generated, gets to 30 and then it finishes because it breaks out of the for loop. So very, very useful. So just to conclude, for loops, they repeat code a certain number of times, a specific number of times, and we have complete control over that. We have control over what it increases by each time. So if I was to change this increase value to 2, so I would increase by 2 every pass, it's actually going to run 15 times. And only half the number of parts are generated. And that's because it's still counting up to 30, but it's just counting up by two every time. So instead of going one, two, three, where it's run three times, we're going from straight to one to three. So it's printed out twice. So it's basically half the number of parts that are generated because we have um, got to 30 in less passes because we have increased I by two instead of one each time. So it's it's going one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 20, 23, 25, 27, 29, and then it gets to um, 30, because if we added 2 to 29, we get to 31. And we don't want 31, we want 30, so it just breaks out after that. So it runs uh, 15 times instead. So there you go. So the in pairs for loop, and I do recommend you check out the video for that. It's on the channel, episode 18, I believe, and also the one before that, which is 17 for tables. Very, very useful. That will run, depending on how many items that are in the table so if there's 20 items in the table that for loop will run 20 times this one however uh, that one is more geared to tables this one is for if you just want to repeat certain code um, for a set number of times very very useful so uh, and we can tell the for loop we can control it using those three variables so we've got the start end and increase the order is essential you can't go putting the increase value at the start um, because the way that it is set out the order is crucial so the first one is the start the second one is the end the third one is the increase and just remember say sei like sensei um, that is crucial for for loops good way to remember it so start end increase or decrease so thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please do subscribe to the channel you can click the album blocks logo in the middle of your screen Please do like the video as well, share it with anybody that you know who would be interested in learning about for loops. Very useful for Roblox development and you will be using them all the time, I guarantee. Leave a comment with any future video ideas and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.